Hey YouTube, welcome back. We had a question pop up here on Twitch chat, and the question was, what are the biggest noob traps in Last Epoch? So a noob trap is like not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something that a new player sees, a new player gets tempted to use, and they decide that, hey, I'm gonna play an entire build around that. And maybe it's not supported in the game, maybe it is uh, an old skill that kind of baits new players into thinking that it's something that you could build around when actually it's not. And my very first example, when I was a new player, it didn't make the list. But my very first example, when I was a new player, I started playing a Primalist and I saw Ice Thorns and I was like, you know, Ice Thorns, maybe that's a build that I could play. I see some increased damage over here, some more damage multipliers. Maybe I'll play an Ice Thorns build. And then very... Uh, very quickly, quickly thereafter, I realized that Ice Runes is not a good choice for a primary source of damage. In fact, this skill is going to be replaced someday. So in any case, not a top five list. We have a top six list. I think there are six separate items, skills, things in the game that I would call the uh, the, the the like the biggest noob traps. Like maybe. Maybe it's like new to action RPGs, new to Last Epoch, or maybe you played Path of Exile in the past. Let's talk about them. So number one on the list, let's pull up a Spellblade. Uh, if you played Path of Exile, or sorry, if you played Last Epoch for a bit and you've heard me complain, you already know what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Fire Aura. Fire Aura is a new, is a, it's, it's not a skill. It's like a, it's a thing that you can proc off of a couple different sources and new players in Last Epoch love fire aura they're like i'm gonna play this rf character righteous fire from path of exile i'm gonna have this damage going on around me all the time and like people love this skill so why is it bad uh it doesn't have a skill tree that's about it it doesn't have any more multipliers to it you could try to use the brand new fire starters torch you could try to use the updated throne of ambition to get more fire damage when you're hitting single target monsters but it just doesn't have support in the game. And not only that, it doesn't really have a payoff either. Uh, you fire aura chance per second. Fire aura has got some base damage here. Uh, what else? It's like fire resistance, fire aura chance. Ward per second per fire aura. Yeah. Melee elemental damage per fire aura. Like the payoff for it is particularly bad. And then just using it as a source of damage itself... It just doesn't get there. New players love it. Their damage kind of falls off. However, it is very fun to play. People love it. If you only want to farm like 100 or 150 corruption, you'll have a good time. But beyond that, you're going to feel like your damage falls off because there is no other way to scale it. Coming in at number two on the list of the top six uh, is a skill that you get very early in the game when you're playing a rogue. Rogue gets access to Flurry. Shortly thereafter, you get Shurikens. You start shifting around, and all of a sudden, you get Acid Flask. And this, it kind of, kind of, you know, you start thinking about. It, you're like, oh, Acid Flask applies poison. I can throw this thing. Maybe, uh, maybe it shotguns with a Toxic Salvo node. Maybe I've got this big hit damage modifier over here in Acid Flask. I could have secondary explosions. There's a lot of stuff in here that makes it look like Acid Flask can deal damage. And you get it early in the game, and it kind of looks fun, and it kind of reminds you of Poisonous Concoction if you're a Path of Exile gamer out there. And wouldn't that be fun if I could play that in Last Epoch as well? No. Acid Flask is not a skill that does much damage. It has very low base damage, and the mechanics of it are just kind of clunky. It doesn't shotgun. Uh, it doesn't deal much damage. It pales in comparison to pretty much anything else that you could do instead especially shadow daggers especially umbral blades but even if you took umbral blades out of the game acid flask would still be the bottom of the barrel in terms of things you can do in rogue and in fact it's one of the worst skills in the game i as an aside for you people who have played a lot of last epoch in the past i think the funniest thing about acid flask for me is that lizard irl made a very good Poison Umbra Blades character in 085. It was like the tank Umbra Blades rogue with 5,000 lives, something like that. And that character that he played was a weekend tournament character that had a required skill of using Acid Flask. So he used Acid Flask in that build, and all of a sudden, 
because reading is the hardest thing for me to do and also the hardest thing for lots of people to do, which is why I watch YouTube videos, no one read any further. And in Lizard's video, he specifically calls out that Acid Flask is the worst part of the build, that he only used it because it was the required skill for the tournament, and that if he weren't in the tournament, he would absolutely not use it. He'd be using something else instead. But no one watched that part of the video, and no one read the description of that video, so there's all these people out there being like, but Perry, Acid Flask is good. Lizard uses it. And it's adorable. I think that's so funny. So Acid Flask, not a great skill. Bathes people into thinking it's a good skill. I actually think it's kind of criminal. I think any skill that is bad that baits new players into using it, where one of the first, very first branches off the skill is a more damage multiplier, is a design mistake. Because this is the dev saying, hey, one of the primary pur purposes of this is to deal more damage. Here's a more damage modifier. They're like, this is like, it's a design mistake. It's a noob trap. It's like the perfect example of something that really just kind of feels bad when you're a new player and you, you know, put your faith in the skill tree and it deceives you. So let's go to the third skill. We're going to go back to a, uh, a primalist here. And we'll talk about something that, you know, is the butt of most jokes. And that's Tempest Strike. I have various chat commands on my Twitch stream making fun of, uh, making fun of Tempest Strike and calling out when the devs also make fun of Tempest Strike. So here's the deal with Tempest Strike. It is a noob trap because it does a lot of damage early in the game. The, the lack of attack speed scaling does not feel impactful at the beginning of the game, which is when it feels good. And you can easily get to, you know, your empowered monoliths and you'll feel like your skill is good. It kind of captures this fantasy of attacking with a melee skill, procking these other spells. It feels like the kind of thing that a shaman or primalist ought to be doing. It's kind of a symbolic skill. Uh, you also get it relatively early in the game and people enjoy it. Like new players love this. It's garbage. It's just like not a skill you want to be using. The damage is fine if you want to know all of the issues with it please come to my twitch stream and type in exclamation point tempest strike i will point you in all the right directions for all the, the all of the critiques of the skill and what we'd like to see this thing do in the future after that i actually don't have any other skills to talk about but we have three other things that i think are the biggest noob traps when it comes to uh last epoch and this one that so this is number four number four comes to reddit posts and i see reddit posts all the time when people are saying like i thought my build was tanky i have capped resistances and who cares what they say after that <clears throat> capped resistances when someone tells you that their resistances are capped in last epoch that should trigger something in your brain that says oh this person thinks that resistances are a uh, a distinguishing factor amongst builds and not just the baseline of your build. So resistances are different in Last Epoch than they are in Path of Exile. And I think a lot of people come to this game from Path of Exile. It is a different uh, segment of the of the formula. Basically, the most important part of re about resistances is that enemies already have 75% penetration. So having uncapped res is not as important as it is in uh, in Path of Exile. You could easily have 70, 71, 72 resistances in Last Epoch, and it's no big deal. Remember, there's also uh, a fire, cold, lightning. Like There's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven different resistances in uh, Last Epoch, as opposed to just four that are in uh, Path of Exile. And if you can drop, you know, three, four, five fire res and get a couple hundred extra life instead, that's a good trade-off because life mitigates everything, whereas, you know, that only mitigates fire resistance instead. Cool. So when you hear someone say like, oh, I've got capped res, why am I not tanky? It's because maybe they don't have enough life, maybe they don't have enough armor, maybe they're missing those other defensive mechanics that are elsewhere in the build that they didn't think about yet. But yeah, just like the resistance thing, when you see someone say that, it's like, oh, eh, I feel like something else is going on here. Number five for our uh, our list of uh biggest noob traps in the game uh i don't i don't want to go into an echo right now but we'll just talk about it number five is another like poe brain thing and that is clearing maps and 
In Path of Exile, you want to clear a bunch of maps because you need to find the next object. You need to find the next map so that you can run the next map. In Last Epoch, I've got all these maps right here, all these echoes, and when I complete one, I'm going to gain access to one or two more, and then I can push corruption, I can reset this, and I can go on. I never need to complete the map. When you kill extra monsters in any given echo, the monsters that you kill will scale how much loot shows up on the right side of your screen. It will scale how much shows up in this little box over here. However, when you're dealing or when you're doing any echo, the echo reward, the little glowy circle that shows up in the middle, does not scale with the amount of monsters that you kill. So if I want to get, uh, what's a good example? Let's go look at this thing here. If I want to get uh, rare swords, which is the echo reward, you can see in the bottom right corner of my screen, the number of rare swords that I get and the rarity of those swords does not scale based on the number of monsters that I kill. So for the most part, just getting these, uh, just blasting your way through the echo, killing the objective, killing any monsters that are chasing you, and then getting out is the best way of min-maxing how much, uh, how much like loot per hour and what you're doing with your time. So you do not need to like clear the rest of the map. Hopefully this changes someday. We're currently in 0.9L. We're waiting like a, we're like a week and a half away from 091. But uh, hopefully this changes because I would like to have more reasons to do other stuff in a Echo. But currently there is no other reason. So do not full clear your maps. The last thing that shows up, let's switch back to this view right here. The sixth, so we have six different things and we call that as, a, as new player noob traps. This is also something that I see on Reddit very often. And this is like people talking about how cool their new items are. And I, it kind of hurts me to like make fun of items that people are proud of. But we got to talk about it because it's educational. And that is a weapon. Let's grab a weapon real quick. Let's grab. Let's grab. Uh, let's talk about two-handed melee weapon. Sure. So specifically melee weapons. Melee weapons and bows. Things that you're attacking with. We're not talking about wands. We are not talking about staves. Just two-handed weapons. And when I see something something like uh like maybe what's what's a good one? Let's go, let's go like this. Increased fire damage. This is a good example. That is pretty good. Let's go, let's go like this. Let's go a sun spear with increased fire damage on it. So the issue with getting percent increased damage on your attack-based weapons is that it gets in the way of you building other things instead. Weapons are a really good place to get attack speed, base critical strike chance, in the case of a melee attack, and flat damage. Those things are all incredible to have on your weapons. Even like crit multi rolls pretty high on your weapons. But getting the percent increased damage, like it scales, you know, your build, you want percent increased damage, but the percent increased damage that you can get on a weapon is the same percent increased damage that you can get on your, on your belt, on your rings, on your amulet, on your idols. Like you'd like to have it somewhere, but I don't think the weapon is the place for you to get it because flat damage ends up being so, so important for pretty much every build in the game. So having flat damage and the fact that your weapon is the best place to get it Per, or, uh, base critical strike chance, something that looks like this. So added melee critical strike chance. You can tell it's added because there's a plus sign there. And then attack speed are great things to have in your weapons. Whereas percent increased, generally speaking, is not something that you're looking to have on your weapon. There are some cases about it. You can well actually me. I know you love well actually me. So make sure you do that in the comments of this video, okay? But yeah, I think for the most part, you're looking for the, the flat damage there the um the attack speed and the base critical strike chance uh, like base melee crit cool so those are those are the six things that we came up with not five because five kind of feels pigeonhole but i think there's worth about six things for the uh the biggest noob traps in last epoch if you have a different list or other stuff that's on your mind let me know as well and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one all right have a good one